Hey, I've been asked to do a series of lessons on the Travis pattern, and so I'm going to. And the Travis pattern is a pattern um, that was developed by Merle Travis, hence the name. Um, Chet Atkins was also uh, used it a lot, and I think Lindsey Buckingham uses it. Um, a lot of people have used it through the years, and basically it's a, it's a staple for any anyone who wants to do fingerstyle guitar. Um, but it's just also fun to play. And basically the premise is that you divide the, the guitar into two sections, the bass section and the treble section. The bass section is the bottom three strings, and it's uh, basically played with the thumb. The thumb gets the responsibility of covering the bottom three strings. The, th the fingers have it easy, they just have to deal with one string. And so the first finger generally plays the sec or third string, and the second finger generally plays the second string, and the, and the ring finger generally plays the first string. Um, and what that allows you to do is to kind of have some bass line moving, like on the C chord. We're going to start with the C chord, and then to answer it with some fingers. And so it's it's kind of a fun feel. It's kind of country sounding. It's got a nice hip hop, you know, not hip hop, but a kind of a bounce to it. Um, you can do it real fast. It's, it's just a fun fun length to play. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with real basic. We're going to start with just the thumb. And we're going to start with the C chord. And I want you to play just a standard C chord, first position. And uh, it's third finger is on the third fret of the fifth string. Second finger is on the second fret of the D string, fourth string. G string's open, like it would be. First finger is going to be on the first fret of the second string. E string is open. And um, we're going to just play the thumb part right now, but what we have to add one more note. We're going to move this third finger. Sometimes it's going to be here on the on the fifth string, and sometimes it's going to be on the sixth string. We're going to alternate. Like that. You just practice that right now. See, I'm using my thumb on both those notes. You can hold them really long, or you can go short. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to add the fourth string in there. So in between each of those notes, basically the, the two notes we were playing represented one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. So now we have two and four we have to cover. So we're going to do that with the fourth string. So we're going to hit that second fret on the fourth string. We're going to go one, two, three, four. And let me slow it down. And that's kind of the pattern, the, the thumb pattern, for any any chord that I use uh, that has the fifth string in the root. So like that one would be the like that. Like I went up to the D7 here. Or if I'm doing an eight, maybe an A7. Or B7. Any any chord that has the uh, if I did maybe a B flat. with the bass note on the fifth string, I'm going to go fifth string, fourth string, sixth string, fourth string. Five, four, six, four, five. Okay. If I'm on the on the, the low string, the E string, so like a G chord, for example, I might just go um, sixth string to the fourth string. Six, four, six, four, like that. Like an E chord would be the same. But I might add that fifth string in there every now and then. Like if I played an, uh, an E form A7 chord. Okay. 
So let's go back to our C pattern. Now, what I want to do is I want to on beat one, so we're playing the fifth string in the thumb, I want to grab the first string with the third finger. So it's really going to be like a pinching motion. Okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to grab the thumb and the third finger at the same time. They're going to kind of come together a little bit. So the first fingers, or the third fingers, plucking up towards the ceiling, the thumb's plucking down, kind of pinching, and I'm going to put that in there. So now we have, so now we have a melody. Practice that for a while. And as always, and I struggle with this myself, start slow. I know you want to hear it fast. You want to hear it like immediately. You want to be there. Um, but you'll, you'll get there quicker actually if you get it down at a slower tempo and then speed it up and then get it down. Otherwise, you're, you're just amplifying and, and multiplying your mistakes. Okay, now let's take that same E string and we're going to put it on beat two, okay, instead of beat one. So it's going to sound like this. So when we go to grab the fourth string is when we're going to pinch. So it's one, two, three, four. Kind of like where a snare would hit. Now I'm going to grab it on beat three, which is when I go down here, when my third finger bounces down to the sixth string, and I play the sixth string with my thumb, I'll grab the, the E string on top, okay? put the E on the f beat four, so it'll be again when we come to the fourth string for the second time in the pattern. And maybe take a while to get that because you're going to be needing to develop some finger independence. Um, it would actually be easier if we were just doing a non-moving chord over here, but I kind of like to start with the C chord because it has so much a, a fun sound to it and it gives us a lot of options when, it, when we get to uh, the point where we're going to make it busier. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to do the same thing we just did with the, the third finger on the first string. We're going to do with the second finger on the second string. So we're going to play it on, we're going to pinch that C note on the second string. We're going to pinch it when we do the downbeat, the first downbeat with the thumb. Move it to beat two. Bad. Uh, beat three. So when our third finger is down here on the sixth string, that's when we're going to pinch. And then what this helps to do. develop some independence of your fingers and also independence of timing so you can ultimately I don't know if I can talk and play at the same time ah no I cannot yeah here we go B3 Ultimately, what we want to do is we want to be able to have all these facilities working together, um, and then you can improvise. You can do anything you want with your left hand, with your right hand, and you can just start start mixing it up. So you're not having to learn patterns like in like in Dust in the Wind. Uh, it's the same pattern over and over again on the right hand. The right hand doesn't really vary at all, and the left hand has a pattern that it goes through, but it's not it's not. Um, improvisational and so we want to get to that point eventually where you have the skill set to be just totally improvisational with your right hand okay so I think we were on beat three with the second finger um, let's go to beat four last one and it's gonna be thumb I see fifth fourth sixth pitch
practice that one. And then the last string, we're going to do the G string now with the first finger. We're going to play it on the downbeat, and then I'll move it over to B2, I'll move it over to B3, and a B4 finally. So here we go. Here we go. them will have their own sound. Okay, now if I made it a C7 chord, so if I added my pinky here on the third fret of the G string, um, that same uh, pattern, so like, I'm playing on two and four, has a, a, to a totally different kind of sound, almost more ragtime. Okay, so that's the first, first lesson, just practice your the thumb bounce, get this pattern down with your thumb, and then practice adding the three fingers one at a time to the different beats, the downbeat, uh, one, and then two, and three, and four. Practice that, okay? Um, we'll, we'll go further in the next lesson. God bless you.